What's up everyone, I wanted to show off my Axis build, which I think is one of the best you can do for both PvE and PvP. I've been able to hop in this close testing and do like extensive testing on a bunch of the different abilities and playstyles, both fighting a lot of V-Blood units and mobs in general, as well as doing a bunch of PvP and trying to figure out like what's actually working, what does it for both, and trying to find like a universal build that you can start off with for those who haven't had a chance to kind of play the game. That's gonna help you a lot. I also think specifically this build is probably the best in terms of solo grinding um there may be some others that do things better in some senses but in terms of kind of self-surviving and self-sustaining in terms of healing and just ability to fight and kill things i think this is one of the best you saw in the montage just able to really take down some monsters and fight some on my own that may not usually be able to happen just with how healing works in this game because when you go to drink a potion you usually kind of pause and might get sustained or might be susceptible to being hit so i think this is a really good balance between the two and i think it's really strong in pvp as well for those aspects and just for what you can do with it so i want to show off what we have here um please ignore my count edna from the incredibles uh this is my character and i think uh he's gorgeous uh, but either way, as you can tell, I've been able to get to 72 on this character. I'm actually, I think, at 73, but my gloves are kind of broken, so is what it is. Um, either way, so I've been able to get pretty far. I do want to have a quick caveat that I have not been able to kill every single V-Blood unit. So there are some abilities that I have not unlocked yet that might fit the playstyle better, but I'm fairly confident that they may not really have that much of an impact. And what I have is pretty sound for what I'm trying to do. So we're going to walk through... First, the Axe's abilities, and then the blood abilities I'm running, and then kind of explain why I think it's good with the blood I use, uh, specifically the blood type that I use, which is Brute. Uh, so quickly, first things first, we have our basic attack here, which is called primary attack, and then we have the Frenzy, um, which you kind of dash for to some more added mobility. And then we have uh, X-Strike, which you throw out these two blades, and they kind of boomerang back, and if both blades hit a target, it incapacitates them. Uh, so these are really good abilities. I think um, axes have some of the strongest. I think the only ones that, in my opinion, really feel as strong is the sword uh, and the spear. I think the slashes are all right, but they're a bit more niche of a play style, while sword and spear are a bit more universal in what they can do and kind of give you some strengths. Um, but otherwise, I think axes are really strong. I've been really, really loving them. It's my, my primary ability, my primary weapon. I have the dark silver axes at the moment with the rest of my gear. Uh, so that's kind of where we're hovering at now. In terms of my mobility, I'm running Veil of Chaos. The main reason is for the recast ability and then the illusion damage. It's really nice because I can kind of go in uh, with my Frenzy and then I can pop out and if the unit's still there, they're going to take that explosion damage, uh, which is really nice. Uh, it just has a lot of capability and mobility in this game is a bit overestimated i think i think the game's a lot slower and less mobile than i think people kind of anticipate in pvp it's a bit it feels a bit better because a lot of abilities are skill shots so it's easy to just kind of avoid things by moving but having that double dash i think is really strong and it just fits the kind of in and out play style you're going to do with the axis because of the explosion so that's why i'm running that one i don't think there's like it really also comes down to play style but i think this for this build uh, is the best and in terms of abilities that we're running, uh, we're running Purgatory, uh, which you call down this pillar of energy that slows enemies and then heals allies and yourself. And it kind of erupts this damage. You can kind of see it here. And if I step in it, I see max because I'm max HP right now, but it kind of heals uh, when you per first put it down and then when it explodes. So it's a really good sustain. If you're kind of in the thick of it fighting, you can drop it on yourself or you can also kind of drop it off in the distance because you might go in and start fighting in it. Uh, there's a lot of uses for this, but the self-heal is really strong. And like I mentioned before, because how hard pots are, they really drink. Uh, and just how like your max HP works during combat, how not being able to fill it all the way back up. It helps to have abilities to just kind of keep you towards the max of your HP throughout the combat. So I think it's really strong. And the other one we're running is Singwing Coil. I like it because it gives you a bit of uh, range abilities as well, with kind of throwing it out. And then also, like I mentioned, um, it kind of does a healing. Uh, you can heal your allies in PvE, and in PvP, it does damage to them. And either way, when it hits someone, um, it hurts them. My man Zeke is running a similar ability right now. Um, and then beyond that, uh, for the ultimate ability, we are running Crimson Beam. Uh, again, this kind of goes along the idea of like, the self-sustain and healing while trying to deal damage. These are all abilities that damage and heal you, which I think is a really strong trait in this game. I don't want to harp too much on the whole pot thing, but that's my reasoning. 
Um, so just something to keep in mind, but this is one of those things you kind of shoot out and it channels and you can kind of just gotta keep it channeling there. And as it does damage, it will heal you. Um, so this is really good in terms of just being able to, honestly, it's a good tank ability because you can just kind of slam it at people and kind of tank their damage really easily. And this all pairs well with the blood type we're taking, which is Brute. I have someone I feast on, um, so I kind of have this ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and drink it just to show you. Uh, so Brute, first off, the primary one gives you 7.5 to 12.5% primary attack life leech, so, which is really nice that you're just kind of doing your primary attack on people. Gives you easy life leech again, kind of just staying uh, you know, damage and healing at the same time is kind of the name of the game with this build. And then also on tier three, you see healing received increased by 20 to 35%. Um, the other part is like more for killing mobs. You just heal when you kill mobs. But otherwise, just all the healing you get is increased by 20 to 35%. So that means your basic attacks. That means your uh, purgatory and that also means your sanguine coil and your crimson beam. So all of your main abilities, which are already doing damage and healing you, are now amplified by 20 to 35 percent now these abilities in this setup can be a bit universal just because a lot of the kind of weapons would benefit from the self-healing kind of fits the play style overall but i think it really pairs well best with the axes just because of the high mobility with the frenzy and the double dashes you basically get three attacks and the incapacitate kind of sets up combos so it just really plays fluidly as well has a pretty strong or pretty fast uh animations for attacks uh, to be able to get that primary life leech. You can sub out Brute for Warrior if you want to, if you can go in that, or if you're setting your gear up for like high crit, uh, physical crit, um, with like some of the, the jewelry options you have, um, like you can see here. Um, if you can go the Topaz route, you can do like physical critical chance, or you can do the Misty, um, or sorry, the Sapphire for spell crit chance. So if you can go in that route, um, you can also alternate kind of like the blood type you might be using if you want to use like the crit chance blood type with like maybe Rogue or if you just want to go Warrior. But I think for me personally, um, because I end up kind of soloing a lot of content and a lot of the PvP fights end up being 1v1, that kind of self-sustain that the Brute gives you, I think is just really, really nice. And the 7.5 to 15% increased primary attack speed uh, with the already pretty fast axes just kind of works hand in hand with this play style so that's what i recommend for the axes let me know if you guys are running anything any different the only thing i might change around is you're not stressed too much about the self-sustain um i also think spectral assassin swapping that out for sanguine coil or swapping that in for sanguine coil is really strong i think this is one of the better abilities just because of the knockback and the reduced damage output it's really strong and there's no easy way to dodge it typically because uh in pvp people usually focus on you so it's easy to kind of just cast um, on the person I'm gonna kind of show you what that looks like so it's easy to kind of just like cast it on the person they spawn in and immediately attack them um, especially if you kind of drop that in and kind of drop sanguine or a purgatory you kind of go in with your combo the animations can get a bit fuzzy for more inexperienced players but either way that's the build I'm running let me know your thoughts I would love to kind of hear what you're thinking what you run and don't like uh, and kind of get your feedback on this is I'm going to start doing builds for uh, kind of the highest quality and kind of the best abilities to run uh, with the different weapon types for playstyles. So this is the first one. So let me know your thoughts. I would love to hear it. And let me know if you guys have any questions as well. Thank you. Bye.